Welcome to Sibspot. Today's Reddit stories are from Malicious Compliance. Story one is by Mandolin2712. You're sure it's mine? Fine, I'll keep it. This happened in 2014. I had just lost my job and I was in the process of looking for a new one, but didn't have much money saved to pay bills in the meantime. So I asked my father if I could borrow $1,200 just to get me through to the next month and I would pay him back as soon as I started working again. He sent the money, I paid my bills, and got a new job shortly after. As soon as I had the money to pay him back, I used my bank's online bill pay option to send him a check. I sent him a text and told him it was on the way and just assumed that was the end of it. Well, a week went by and he hadn't gotten it. I thought maybe it took a few days for the bank to actually process the bill pay option because I hadn't used it before. So I asked him to just wait a few more days and see if it came. Several days later, it still hadn't gotten there, so I called the bank and asked them, and they told me I could stop payment on it for free, so I did. Then I wrote a personal check, and I mailed it. I just assumed something went wrong on the online bill pay. About two months later, I got a check in the mail from a medical facility in the state my father lives in for $1,200. I called and asked them about it and they told me on a recorded line that it was an overpayment on an account my father had with them and it was a legitimate check and it was mine to keep. At that point, I didn't associate it with the bill pay thing I had tried to do a couple months before. I did call my father to ask him about his accounts with this place because there was no reason they should have my address to be sending me an overpayment if he actually made one. He had no idea what was going on because he hadn't actually used that facility in years. I looked up the place on Google and it finally dawned on me what happened. My father's address was on Saddlewood Drive at that point in time. But when I typed it into bill pay, my phone auto-corrected it to Sandalwood. And it just happened to be the same numerical address. And because my father's name was listed as the payee, they erroneously attempted to apply it to his account. So that's where my check had gone. I tried to call them again and explain what happened and the lady on the phone was extremely rude to me. She told me, I've already talked to you about this. I don't know why you're calling again. We sent you what we owed you. This account is settled and we will not be talking to you about it again. I asked if she was sure they owed me this money. She practically shouted, yes, and I just smiled and hung up the phone. I deposited the check into my bank that day. They didn't try to call me back until about six weeks later. I had been wondering how long it would take. The person who called me was a different lady and she told me to tell me that a mistake had been made and I owed them $1,200. I told her she was misinformed and she should go back and listen to the recorded calls I had made to their office and gave her the date. I had been reassured multiple times that the money was mine and I was in the clear to cash the check. And then I hung up. I haven't heard a single thing about it since then. The top comment underneath all that by interaction number 9110 Two wrongs make 1,200 rights. I guess that because it's on a recorded line and you already tried to correct the issue, there's nothing they can do at this point. You don't owe them anything. It's their mistake. You tried to correct it. You've already wasted your time. I think that's worth $1,200. Our next story is by It Dawned On Me Too. You're upset that I'm the top performer? Then you get yourself a bare minimum employee. For background, my jobs have always been geared towards data entry, and that's what I'm best at. I've always typed over 120 words per minute and love finding new keyboard shortcuts to save me time and just be more efficient overall. Not a brag. Trust me. Because of this skill, I've always excelled in prior roles that utilize it. That is, until my current career. I've been with this company for almost three months now, and with a lot of data entry jobs, this one has weekly productivity that you must meet. By week two, I was meeting productivity once I grasped the role. This fueled me to try to get even faster. I learned the programs I was to be using and used simple keyboard shortcuts to toggle between programs, closed them, used Excel formulas to concatenate and VLOOKUP rep- oh my god, (laughs) this person's techie for sure, used Excel formulas to concatenate and VLOOKUP repetitive information that others usually type out every time, etc. You get the idea. If there's a way to save time, I will find it. We get the team productivity email yesterday and I see that I've tripled what is expected of a single employee in an entire week. My numbers skyrocketed to levels that haven't been reached before. Now, here's the really fun part. 
Rather than getting any sort of praise, this company has felt anti-praise since I started, or being asked how I did it, I get an email from management stating my numbers are concerning and that they're essentially opening up an investigation to see if I cheated somehow. I even received a screenshot of others' numbers in an area with management stating it's impossible to have that much of a lead over those who have been there for years. My numbers were in the 800s, while the second highest was 300 in this week. Today, my boss calls me and she says she's been spending the day checking my work, and so far everything has been accurate. Mind you, this investigation didn't start with her. She was just asked to check my work and was reporting what she found. But it's all accurate. She says I can continue with what I'm doing since she found no problems. Now, I learned very quickly that this isn't the type of place to be praised. There is zero incentive for anyone to go above and beyond if it's just going to be questioned. Now, to clarify, I fully understand that if something seems off, a company is going to want to check to ensure I am understanding the work and entering it properly, especially with a new employee. But to email me stating it's concerning and impossible prior to even checking my work is where I have the issue. I shouldn't have even needed to be told it had to be looked into. They were told my numbers were accurate, and there has been radio silence since. No apology, no praise, no how did you do it in hopes I can show the rest of my team so we can get caught up one day. So, with what little knowledge of Excel I had, I made a spreadsheet that tallies my accounts as I go so I can pace myself, and am now alerted as soon as I meet that goal so I can stop working without going over. I did add just a tiny more wiggle room to my spreadsheet as to not accidentally go under productivity to where they would have a reason to use coercive action but just ever so slightly above the bare minimum. If they're going to treat me like a bare minimum employee, they're going to get a bare minimum employee. If your business doesn't have ways for you to, what's the word, migrate vertically, then there's no reason for you to work harder. They have to create incentive, otherwise you're just going to do what's necessary and not go above and beyond. Most of the jobs I've worked in the past didn't really have room for vertical migration. They didn't even pay overtime at some of the places I used to work at. There was a period of time where they allowed it and then people were getting paid more and they just nixed it and said no more overtime. So people just, you would leave as soon as your hours were over. Underneath that by Funstar J. I played the top talent game for a while at a glorified data entry job. Most of my coworkers were at or below the daily goal while I was always in the top three did 15% more than the goal. I had to tell the newbies not to rock the boat. Going above and beyond would not earn you a better raise. We all got the same raise every year. Being at the top of the list or the bottom would not improve how the company saw you. One year, I had a friend who took some real initiative and helped out wherever he could. When the raise came, he got the same 50 cent an hour raise as the bottom performers. He walked out of that meeting fuming and told me I was right to be cynical. My favorite part of the job was I could get my work done in 60 to 90 minutes a day and spend the rest of the time watching YouTube or writing stories or BSing with coworkers. If the team lead asked if I could take on more work, I just pointed at the numbers. I was always in the top three. What more could they ask? Underneath that by Mrs. Taterhead. I love my job. I feel the work I do is meaningful. It's a flexible job and no one is standing over me micromanaging me. It's challenging, and I'm still learning new things after 15 plus years. I go over and above for my personal satisfaction, but my employer does not do performance-based raises. Everyone gets the same percentage. I tell people, going over and above is like peeing yourself in a dark pair of pants. It gives you a nice warm feeling, but nobody notices. That's a pretty good analogy right there. (laughs) A little bit of a gross analogy, but a good analogy nonetheless. Our last story is by Bob the Peasant. You want the job? Approved. It's yours. $120,000 pay cut. Had an employee paid roughly $240,000 per year as a high-grade level software developer for the last year or so. They're always unavailable, always underperforming. When they do attend meetings, they slip up and call people by names that we don't have in our organization at all. Pretty obvious what is going on. Anyway, our big software company owns dozens of small software company subsidiaries. Our friend here applied as an external candidate to one of our subsidiaries for a Scrum 
master position. He went through the interview process. They chose to extend him an offer. They were surprised to find out he was already in the system and contacted me about it. I explained that he seemed very distracted and unenthusiastic about his current role, and I fully support his career change if it is what will make him happy. Transfer approved! The gymnastics involved in trying to explain how it was a mistake to people he interviewed with for several hours is amazing. For what it is worth, I don't care if you have multiple jobs as long as your work gets done. Top comments underneath, again by interaction number 9110. When a side hustle becomes your only hustle, that's no hustle. And underneath that by Krabby Monkey, you've got to have the bustle to back the hustle. It took me a minute to realize how this guy could pull this off because I didn't read the very first sentence that is kind of important. Trigger warning for people that have multiple remote work jobs. So this guy was getting paid $240,000 a year for a high grade level software development and he was always unavailable and underperforming? That's crazy. I don't know how people manage to have two jobs like that. That's got to be difficult. But I mean, he must have been making some serious bank because 240000 a year is a lot to begin with. At least to me it is. So if he's got that job and another one at the same time, why do you even need that much money? Our stories for today have come to a close. Until we meet again, have an undistracted and enthusiastic day. <laughs>